Welcome again to my PhD dissertation. I would like to start by thanking again the committee that are here, Perfe and uh, Christine and Munia, but also Dimitri and Sergio, who are part of the committee as substitute, that like accepted to read my thesis. And also I would like to thank Emilia and Carlos who had me during these four years in uh, researching this, that is my PhD which uh, is the, thesis, the title of my thesis is Assessing the Impact of Music Recommendation Diversity on Listeners. And I will start by introducing a little bit why I've chosen to work on this topic. And first of all, I would like to start with this kind of old fashioned and maybe complex uh, figure from uh, the work of, on the genealogy of music by Nathier when collaborating with Molino, because somehow it's where my PhD research started because when you work with music recommender system in a music technology group, you feel like uh, an outsider in the sense that somehow the music recommender system seems to not have this kind of musical aspect in comparison to other things like, I don't know, estimating tempos or being a raga or creating drum loops with a, a deep learning model. But I found this figure particularly interesting because as Solemel, it with some imagination, uh, we can uh, see a parallelism between this, so all the elements that contribute to the signification of what music is, and music recommender system, if we imagine them as social technical system. In particular, uh, I focus on listeners, and maybe most of the time listeners are considered like passive uh, users of a technology, but instead listeners actively participate in signifying what music is and listening itself it's part of a composition as uh, the american sociologist tia denora wrote and we have seen in the last more or less 100 years we have moved from listening music with a gramophone where to listen to what song was kind of a miracle to streaming services with, with just one, one click we can access to millions of songs and Exactly uh, on streaming services, uh, music recommender systems play a huge role helping in finding music, uh, artists, tracks, albums that best fit or needs. And for this reason, uh, we chose to, uh, to focus this thesis on the analysis of the impact of music recommender systems. But recommender system existed since much before the streaming services and this figure from 30 years ago, is a proof of that. When the recommender system started to be designed, originally the idea was that uh, uh, a lot of information started to be available through electronic media devices. And uh, we start to feel like overwhelmed and recommender system uh, helped people in organizing better this information, avoiding what is uh, named the information overload. And today uh, in streaming services, we see a lot of uh, recommender system mostly every interaction that we have. And still we face the kind of problem of information overload because we have millions of songs that we have among which we can choose. And especially today what we can see is that there is also a huge focus on personalization as you may notice when you see something like made for you or something that you might like. And even if my thesis uh, has been not focused on personalization on the impact of personalization, I think it's important to have in mind this. And what my thesis instead has focused on is to consider one particular aspect of that is part of what uh, normally is intended to, uh, it's, it's used to make a recommendation uh, successful, which is diversity. And to talk about diversity, it's first of all understanding the concept of difference, because we live in a world that it's really easy to connect with people, opinions, uh, music, uh, and in general, ideas uh, different that we might consider different. And exactly this interaction between us and what we consider diverse, diverse help us in defining who we are and also help us in understanding better what we consider the others. And it is important to uh, promote diversity to foster diversity because it has been proven that uh, it can help in foster innovation and creativity. It can help uh, in, uh, uh, in 
this is promoting uh, freedom of speech and also access to knowledge. So there are, there are a lot of things for which diversity is indeed useful, but also uh, we've chose to focus on diversity because the, side, the opposite case, so the situation in which the algorithms prevent us to confront with diversity is something that we want to avoid. So this was the introduction or mostly the motivation for what I did during the last four years. Now to formally start presenting the research, I would like to read a little uh, piece of the thesis statement. So what we believe we accomplished with this thesis. And in this thesis, we provide empirical evidence of the function that diversity plays in mediating the relationship between music recommendation and listeners and connecting the measurement, perception, and impact of diversity we depend the understanding of recommender system role in shape today's music listening experience. So this is what we aim, what we try to do, what we believe we have done, we have done let's say. And for achieving this, we have to pursue an interdisciplinary approach because on so, somehow we start with the information retrieval, the recommender system literature, because thanks to, uh, from, from this literature, we define the main recent question of this thesis. But then we also have to look at the human, human computer interaction field for uh, being able to design better the interaction between people and algorithms. And lastly, but also uh, very importantly, we have seen a lot of works from media study and music sociology because to approach the problem, uh, to avoid, uh, we did this for uh, avoiding approaching the problem of music recommendation diversity only from an engineering perspective. This is uh, the outline on the presentation, and it will be the, the most entry part. I will start with the measurements of diversity, which is the, the topic that I started working on when I started the PhD in 2018. Then I will move to perception, which probably is the, one of the hugest part. And I spent a couple of years working on what does it mean perception of diversity. And then finally, I will move to the impacts part uh, of chapter five, which it's the part of the thesis that I developed in the last year, more or less. And I will conclude with some final remarks. So, measurements. Uh, when I started in 2018, uh, there wasn't so much literature about music recommendation diversity. So uh, what has been necessary has been first to review all this literature, but also uh, try to make sense of all the works done until then, because somehow what we noticed is that there were a lot of paper, a lot of applications, but still uh, there wasn't a really strong or rigorous theoretical uh, framework for trying to, uh, for understanding what kind of diversity was measurable. And so the first part of the, let's say, of the work has been exactly to review the, the, all the work done until now, all the literature. And this is uh, what we came up at the, or less at the end of the first year. So a mind map that, uh, connect all the different diversity that uh, are part of what we consider music recommender system diversity. And you can see here the resemblance a little bit with the figure I started with. In particular, when thinking about music recommender system diversity, we have on one side the item diversity, so the, music, the diversity of the music that people listen to. And the other side, we have the user diversity, so the diversity of the listener themselves. Connecting these two parts, there is Perceived diversity, which is the diversity of the item, but as perceived by the users. And as we will see, this perceived diversity is not always the same that the diversity computed with computational metrics. And lastly, there is also the behavioral diversity, which is the diversity of the interaction between user and items. And as we will see, this probably is the one, the part that is mostly mediated by recommender systems. And a starting point, we chose to start with the height and diversity, and in particular, we consider a specific, a specific case of music recommendation, which are playlists. And playlists actually exist since much before that recommender system, because people organize music in playlists since at least we said iTunes or Winamp, so a lot of years before music recommender system start to be commercialized. But, and in particular, the music information retrieval community focus on two tasks related on playlists during the last 20 years. On one side, on automatic playlist generation, so giving a set of initial instructions to create a playlist from scratch, and then on automatic playlist continuation. So given a playlist, try to complement it with new tracks, with new suggestions. 
Another uh, good thing about playlists is that given this interest during the last 20 years, a lot of data sets have been published. And a starting point, we decide to uh, explore this kind of historical information about playlists for uh, starting to, to use the diversity metrics that you wanted to test and uh, to see if difference between playlists created in different uh, data set may emerge by looking at the diversity of them. So we, we start by measuring playlist diversity, and in particular, we focus on two aspects on one side on the popularity of the playlist, which is the popularity of the tracks within the playlist. And on the second part on the tags, which is another resource that is widely used by the music information retrieval community. So a notation of the tracks that can be music genre, can be mood, can be every uh, type of description that user normally use for describing these tracks. And in particular, in the case of tags, what we uh, try to do is to measure a distance for understanding if a playlist have more or less uh, heterogeneous tracks. And in order to do so, we create, uh, we use a word of vector representation model using a huge corpora of tags, so other notation. We try to uh, define a di distance within tags. And this is uh, the two dimensional representation of this uh, space created with the word vector representation model. And so you can see the idea is that if two tracks are near, like for example, alternative, alternative rock, it means that they have been used a lot for describing the same tracks. So we have this kind of these two features. And the next step has been to focus on the data set diversity. So try to understand how this feature of the playlist were distributed among uh, the several playlists in the data set. And in particular, we first focus on comparing radio playlist versus user generated playlist. And what we notice is that Normally, radio playlists are more balanced, both in terms of popularity, but also in terms of uh, tags. And this could make sense if you imagine that uh, uh, radio curators have kind of commercial constraints, so they have to create playlists for engaging the most possible number of listeners. While, for example, when we go on our summer road trip, we do a playlist, we just think about ourselves, and we don't care so much about commercial uh, policies. And the other things that we focused on was uh, on comparing the playlist created in a streaming area and the one uh, created in the streaming services. And here, what we notice is that overall, in the whole this playlist, the, the popularity is kind of lower. And in this case, we believe that the fact that today in streaming services, it's really easy to add a playlist with, uh, add a track in a playlist with a single click. It means also that if we see a track that we like in another friend playlist, we can, with another click, add it to our playlist, which is consequently means that we are making the tracks and the playlist more popular. Instead, before the streaming services for creating a playlist means to load a CD or to buy a CD, which is really an action that is much more costly. So to summarize a bit, what we did during this first of the PhD has been trying to use uh, some diversity metrics for comparing place data set and has been really a way of trying these metrics. And in particular, we focus on playlist creation strategy, trying to understand if the technological context can influence or not strategies. But one of the hugest limitations of this study is that somehow we considered an average playlist creator, which is something that doesn't exist because people create playlists for very different people. People have a lot of different backgrounds. So the idea that we have there is an average user, it's something that really limits the validity of our results. And in the same line, also to believe that there is a diversity matrix that is the same for everyone, it's really a strong limitation because as we will see in the next part, when focusing on perception, people might look for diversity in a lot of different things. So Perception. Perception has been the second part of the PhD, more or less between 2020, 2019, 2021. And in this part, we try to understand the agreement between perceived diversity, so the diversity that listeners perceive, and diversity as computed with computational methods. And for doing that, we first design a user study, and then we perform some interviews with the participants of our study. I will start describing the user study, which the main idea was taking two lists, two music lists, to pass them to a model 
able to identify the most diverse one. Then taking the same list and send them to the, the, the some listener, ask them to identify the most diverse one according to their opinion and beliefs. And by analyzing the agreement between listeners and the model, we try to understand better how the computational metrics really are able to measure, uh, really agree with the perceived diversity. So for doing uh, what described in this model, we designed an online survey that was composed that by three tasks. The first task, which is the trust task, listeners, and the model have to analyze and to listen to two lists of music uh, tracks, audio tracks, and try to uh, the, uh, select the most diverse according to the musical features. The second pairs of lists were a list of photos of artists. And in this case, we asked listeners to uh, select the most diverse one according to social salient attributes. And then in the combo task, in the combined task, we mix together artists and tracks and other tracks, asking in this case to the listener, in this case, to identify the most diverse according to both. And now, uh, I would like to show you a little bit some detail about the model that we designed for identifying the most diverse list. First, for defining what is uh, the track diversity, we uh, take, we extract from the audios a uh, list of handcrafted MR features, and we use the cosine distance for measuring the pairwise diversity between each tracks. And instead, in case of the artist diversity, we select for uh, for input, uh, for characteristic, which are gender, birthplace, skin, tone, and debut here. In this case, we use the Goodall distance because of the categorical nature of the characteristics. Once having this way of uh, calculating the barwise distance between tracks, we chosen two aggregation mechanism for selecting the most diverse list. And the first one is the average. So basically, we take the average of the distance within tracks on the list, and we say, if the average uh, is higher, for example, in the case of list A, the diversity of list A is uh, major than the diversity of list B. In this case, we consider all the distance equally important. And the second uh, mechanism that we implement was take the minimum. So in this case, the idea was if the minimum uh, distance, as in the case of list B, is major than the, the, the list B, uh, we try to focus on the closest distances. And the other things that uh, I wanted to show you now are the, a little bit what were the participants of our study. And they were mostly people from Europe, North America, uh, male, uh, aged between 18 and 35. And they declared, declared to be white, uh, to have white skin. And in, with regard to this number, we can say that most of the participants in our study were people from what are called the weird society, so Western educated, industrialized, rich and democratic societies. But also in terms of musical background, what we attracted most were electronic music listeners because the participation on the study was kind of free, so we didn't pay people, and we attracted the most people into electronic music. They were interested in participating. We try to answer two main questions throughout this study, thanks to this study. And the first one is to what extent tracks audio feature and artist attributes can be used to assess the perceived diversity. And what we notice is that in terms of artist attributes, uh, in terms of tracks, so in audio features, we actually see that there is an agreement between people and the model, especially when the clear is clear enough. So in the case where it's evident that one list is much more diverse than the other, the model and the people agree. And on the same line, we also noted that uh, people uh, and the model agree on uh, the list most diverse, so the artist list is most diverse, uh, looking at the characteristic that we selected. And in this case, we found that the agreement was greater for uh, people coming from the same social group. So people uh, aged less than 35 and people coming from world uh, societies. The second question was, uh, that we did was, to what extent domain knowledge and familiarity influence participant perception of diversity? And the results here were quite interesting because we found that the people not into electronic music tends to agree more and to also be less, more satisfied about the recommendation received. While instead, people that declare or seems to be more expert of electronic music were not really in agreement among themselves. And this was curious because uh, 
is something that we will we have used also on the study after and the study on the impact. But to summarize this part, first, uh, as I just said, we found that probably diversity aware recommendation can be useful for people not really into a music genre, but less useful, less useful for people specialized, so people that are really know a lot about a music style. And also we have seen how mixing audio tracks features and also artist characteristics, we can try to define and to arrive at design music recommendations that are both diversity aware, but also socially relevant. Now, after this study, uh, we still have some question, we still have some doubt. And for, for in, because of this, we, are, we choose to organize uh, some interviews with some people. And what was really interesting is that with the interviews, we found a lot of other insights that we have used later in the study. Now I'm going to play a short video. Diversity in um, where the music comes from, so like the origin, geographic origin. It's usually first important that uh, I listen to female artists. That's the first thing I would say. Be able to listen to styles of music which I haven't heard before from parts of the world that I haven't heard before. Well, in terms of diversity, I think I particularly focus on the lyrics of the song. Different cultures and different countries, sometimes even under different uh, political or religious influences. I think about how different this song is from the mainstream tracks that you can hear in the radio. Different sounds and especially that the song can me something that I can I can also feel connected to. So these people in, uh, in the video were not the real participants on the study, but actually were just random colleagues from the MTG that helped me in creating this promotional video for the conference. But what I found really interesting is that just speaking eight uh, people in my group, I found such a variety of responses for a question, what you're looking, when looking for, when listening to music, what you're looking for diversity. So uh, this clearly was, uh, was fun. And also I would like to thank the people here that part of the video. And in the real study, we, select, uh, we interviewed 14 participants from the user study. And uh, the interview uh, was um, structured in two parts. In the first part, we focused most on their experience on participating on the study, so how they choose what list was more diverse in the user study. This, in the second part of the interviews, instead, we talk uh, more about their experience, uh, you know, daily life with music recommender systems. And what we have to confirm of, it's first this role of uh, knowledge and in particular when we interview the people uh, the the participants of the study most of them start to talk and to say something like I'm, I'm a newcomer to electronic music or maybe i really into electronic music and what uh, the people that the, define themselves as newcomers say okay it's really different to estimate diversity so maybe i will rely more on generic fees and for example in the words of this participant people who don't know much about a particular genre probably would agree on something that are, be, that are a bit more generic. Instead, experts are thrown to be kind of, uh, uh, have more uh, instrument for categorize which is the more diverse. So they may have a more sophisticated way of listening to electronic music, but this also brings some bias because of prejudice and preferences. In the words of this uh, participant, I can feel like I can make a better decision of what is diverse, but then there is this kind of bias that comes based on the fact that I like this music a lot. The second point that we focus on during the interview is that diversity, according to the participants of the interview, was really a way for deconstructing stereotype views of this culture. This, for example, these participants say that the electronic music that I went to listen to and that I liked before the survey was predominantly white male which I suppose is still what is predominant in the industry to some extent. But also this other one that told us, I realized while making the questionnaire that I had a very strict, let's say, definition about electronic music myself. So diversity as a tool for uh, seeing different parts of what before was just through the pies of music. And also the role of algorithmic recommendation has been something that the participants discussed about. And in particular, we asked them to provide with some, with some example about how 
uh, algorithmic recommendation to help them changing the view of genre or pool of a culture. And uh, this participant, for example, told us that I never like EDM, electronic than music, but algorithms present to me different tracks. And I found myself listening to it and noticing the difference within this genre. In then I start listening to it more often. So this, uh, with this interview, we concluded the first part, of, sorry, the second part of the PhD about perception. And after that, we moved toward the end of the PhD in analyzing, in choosing to analyze the impact of music recommendation diversity. And we decided to design, we design another user study. And this time, we first, we choose to focus on uh, listeners who are newcomers for music genre, because as we had seen it during the interview, they probably have a different ways of listening to music in comparison to experts. And then we again focus on electronic music, but this time we uh, decide to design a longitudinal study that I'm now I'm going to show you. And this longitudinal study uh, was last for 12 weeks, so three months. And the first part of the study has been to design a depre screening and was uh, designed for selecting this pool of participants, not into electronic music, or be sure that people uh, participating in the study were really newcomers. And what we did was first using Prolific, which is the recruitment platform that uh, thanks to which we recruit the participants, and we first uh, filter out people according to some demographics for having first people with similar cultural background, and for this, we choose just people from Southern Europe, and then also uh, to have people with similar demographic. And in this case, we select especially people under 42 years old for any also less generational difference among participants. Then in the second part of the free screening, instead we focus on the, the relationship with electronic music. And what we try to do is to uh, exclude participants into electronic music, so selecting just uh, really kind of newcomers to this genre, but instead try to gather people that are uh, really into listening to music in other genre. So people that listen to at least one hour of music every day, or they declare to listen at least one hour, and also that say that maybe have a lot of variety uh, musical tastes. So uh, this press screening was the, before the, say, the experiment start, and in the real experiment start with the press study, Weeks one, where they have to compute, they have to complete, sorry, the electronic music feedback, feedback question, which is the questionnaire that we design to gather the information about uh, opinion that participants had on electronic music. And the first part of this uh, feedback of this uh, questionnaire uh, was designed to measure the openness that people have with in listening to electronic music. And we designed this kind of simple question asking to participants, would you be open to listen to one hour of electronic music? And they have to select one of the options, the option here, yes or no. And this question, this, uh, the question can be coded with a Goodman scale, which is what is reported here on this table. And the good things about this scale is that basically when you say no to the first uh, answer, to the first item, it automatically, automatically implies not to the other ones, because if you're not open to listen to one hour every month, you will not be open to listen to one hour every two weeks. So here in the table, we have the zero that are negative answers, one positive. And thanks to this table, we were able to estimate a final score of openness, the O score for each party. The second part of the questionnaire, we uh, wanted to uh, study the, which we wanted to estimate the, implicit uh, association the participants have with uh, electronic music. And for doing that, we implement uh, a single category implicit association test that I'm going to show you how does it work. So let's see. Okay, so during the test, a uh, word appear in the center of the screen and the goal of the test is to characterize the word on the center with uh, the categories on the left or on the right. So the idea is that if you think that this word is part of a category on the left, you have to use your left hand and click on the keyboard. If you think that it's part of the category on the left, so unpleasant for electronic music, you have to use your right word, right hand and click on the keyboard. And um, 
if you do it right, you have this green check. Again, sometimes there are also music genre. And if you do it wrong, you have this red cross green. And the, this test is built uh, with uh, several block host trials and uh, the categories change order. So on one, side, one time you see electronic music on the left, on the other side, the other time electronic music on the right. And the main idea is that by looking at the response time that uh, listeners have for co when completing this uh, test, it is possible to estimate if a positive or negative uh, association implicitly is uh, associated with, uh, in this case, electronic music genre. Okay. So this questionnaire was done at the beginning of the study and then for four weeks, people were not required to do any action. And at the end of week, week four, we uh, divide the participant in two groups. The one group that will receive uh, high diverse uh, recommendation and the other group that receive low diverse recommendation and I'm going to explain later what does it mean. But at the end of week four, uh, and uh, the pre part starts the con stage, which is kind of the part in which listeners have been exposed to music recommendation. In this part, for four weeks, on a daily basis, from Monday to Friday, they have to listen, they have to participate on a in a listening session where they were exposed to music recommendation. And on the weekend, they have to complete again the questionnaire that we designed. So they, they, they do this for four weeks. And now I'm going to show you the structure of each listening session, which was quite simple because also the task was on a daily basis. So we avoid to do something too much uh, hard to complete. And was uh, the each listening session was divided in four blocks. First, participant and to calibrate the audio, the audio volume for avoiding uh, damaging the hearing. Then they were exposed, exposed to a three minute long uh, mix of uh, electronic music recommendation that uh, I will describe later how we build them. And after listening to this three audio, three minute audio, they provide us some feedback if they like it or not, or if this tracks sound familiar to them. At the end of this and optionally, they could have chosen to uh, interact with the playlist with the full tracks on YouTube or just simply finish the listening session. So the playlist was kind of optional during these listening sessions. So in total, they completed 20 times these listening sessions and four times the questionnaire during this stage. And at week nine, start the final part of the study. So the post stage in which, again, they have to do nothing for four weeks. And the last action was to complete the questionnaire at the end of week uh, 12, exactly three months after the start. So this is the longitudinal study, a lot of things actually, and it was really long to design all of this. And now I will focus just a bit on how we create the recommendation vision. Here it's kind of important. So electronic music, it's really a wide genre. There are tons of genre style with really different characteristics. So for creating the recommendation, we first needed a data set because you need some tracks for creating recommendation. And for creating the data set, we started by looking at Wikipedia and just taking all the genre as subgenres that are here listed. On having this list of genres subgenres, we looked at another source, which is Every Noise at Tones, which is a website with a huge scatter plot in which you can find a lot of music genre, and for each genre, you can find a representative uh, list of tracks. So we map the genre from Wikipedia to every noise at tones, and we create this kind of, we select this kind of uh, representative tracks, and uh, for each of the 181 subgenre, we randomly extracted 10 tracks. And at the end, we obtained our musical work, our scatter plot. And these tracks here represent the data set of candidate tracks that could be eventually part of the recommendation. This in particular, this uh, plot has been created by, for each track from the audio, we use feature extractor based on convolutional neural network. And this is the two dimensional representation of the bed created with this uh, network. And as you can see, you, there are some kind of genres clusters together, like in the bottom, there is a drum and bass and also here near there is a little bit of jungle, which are kind of similar, or on the right, there is a lot of trance music. So this space actually 
uh, this embedding, the embedded space englobe part of the musical characteristics, uh, part of the characteristic of the musical genre, part of our data set, which is something that is also visible in this kind of table, representing some features, so how the features are distributed in the spaces. And for example, we can see that track with extreme tempos are on the bottom of the space, while tracks with high danceability are in the top right. Instead, in terms of instrumental methods and acousticness, most of the tracks with higher values are here on the top left. So we have this embedding. We have uh, we we notice that this embedding has some musical characteristic within them. And the next step has been to create the music list. And for doing that, we uh, we designed two strategies. For the low diversity group, we focus on one music genre, trance. And as you can see, all the all the lists were clustered more or less in the same area of the space. While instead for the high diversity group, we select one list for each of the genres that we had. And uh, you can notice that in this case, the tracks are really spread over all the musical space that we created. So the high diversity group will eventually discover a lot of different parts of electronic music, while the high low diversity group actually explore one single genre. Now I will start uh, discussing the result by looking first at the feedback that participants gave us during the listening session. And the first thing, thing that we can notice here, these are the listening session, and the, on the plot there are the interaction with the playlist. As, as you can see, through the session, over the course of the study, people start to be less engaged in exploring the playlist after the listening session. But as you can notice from the trend lines, the high diversity group seems to be seem to have been more engaged in discovering more about the tracks that have been exposed to the, during the listening session. So again, to interact with the playlist was not mandatory for participating in the, in the study, was the optional things that people chose to do. In fact, it makes sense that maybe at the beginning, most of the participants say, okay, let's explore the playlist and then at some point, they start to be kind of not interested in that. But what is also interesting is that in terms of like ratings, so how much people appreciated the low diversity group seems to be uh, seems to have more like the tracks that even if they were kind of same genre. And instead, in the case of the diversity group, we have a lot of at least three sessions, if maybe before, that were totally dislike. And in particular, there was an electroacoustic session, and there was a noise session with that kind of electronic music genre that you are, if you're not into electronic music, might be harder to listen to. So. What, uh, what we found also with other, uh, with other analysis is that in general, the high diversity group uh, seems to be more engaged with the playlist and seems to be more curious in exploring more about the music they've been exposed to. When instead, the low diversity group seems to have liked more the, the tracks they were exposed to, even if they choose to not interact with them. And another side note that we found is that the, both group, the high diversity and low diversity group, at the same level of familiarity. And this is important because somehow we wanted to exclude that familiarity would influence the, let's say, the, the writings and engagement also with the music. And the fact that uh, we select a participant not familiar with electronic music, it's uh, important and clearly part of uh, the reason why we chose to design this study. Now, in terms of, in, I will show you now results in terms of uh, openness and implicit association, the word, uh, variables that we collected six, six times during uh, the course of the 12 weeks. And first, in terms of openness, we can notice that they started from, uh, most of them were already quite open in listening, electronic music, but after three, uh, after three months, they start to be even more open to listen to electronic music. And this is particularly noticeable in the high diversity group than in the low diversity group. Instead, in terms of uh, implicit association, what is most important here is to see that in the, both in the pre, but also in the post for the both two groups, most of the participants have kind of not so extreme association with the electronic music. And among the motivation of this, it's mostly maybe because they were not, they have not pre-existing bias and prejudice with electronic music, but also because maybe uh, through over the course of the weeks, they realized that uh, they kind of deconstructed what they believed was before electronic music, because this was also one of the aim of the 
study, so to show people what is electronic music, people that don't know about it. So uh, again, we are in PhD association more or less tend towards less extreme violence while loneliness increase. But in this case, we don't found extremely difference between the several different stages of the study. And also we have seen that the degree of diversity was not really influential. So both groups have more or less the same behaviors in these terms. So to conclude, what we try to answer with the study. First, to what extent listener implicit and explicit attitudes towards an unfamiliar music genre can be affected by exposure to music recommendation? And this was the main question. But also the second question was, what is the relationship between music recommendation diversity and the impact on listener side? And the first impact that we focused on was on discovery. So the fact that actually, seemed, according to our study, the group with high diversity recommendations seemed to be more engaged and more curious in knowing more about this music genre than before was unknown to them. And this was probably the most important, the most relevant difference that we found between high diversity and low diversity. In terms of implicit association, instead we found less evident and less strong uh, results, but we put it first because the people not familiar with electronic music also were participating in the study. They have to categorize this word in the center and probably some genre was so that some of the words in the middle of the screen were just labels. So if you don't know anything about bubble wave, you don't know if you have negative or implicit or, or positive association with that. And it also the, the score computed with implicit association, it's more noises. And let's say that in this case, probably much more study should be done for exploring if really uh, implicit association can be uh, affected by the exposure. And in terms of openness, instead, we see an overall increasing of openness in uh, listening to electronic music. But also what we notice is that, especially after the exposure, so after the four weeks of listening to electronic music, they were kind of open. And at the end of the study, they returned to be kind of less open in uh, listening to electronic music. And this is somehow also will make sense if you think, for example, when in summer, you listen again and again to the same song, and at some point, you start to be more open in listening to it. So we could have created this mechanism of listening electronic music for four weeks, and then after four weeks, they seem to be kind of engaged and in this. So with this, uh, the, the main part, I mean, all the empirical evidence that we found, ends, and now I will just conclude with a couple of final remarks. First, in terms of findings, as I show you, we mostly focus on these three lines. So passing from measurements, kind of most quantitative uh, analysis, moving to our perception and impact in a more qualitative way. And this is something that has been really important because to complement methods has been necessary because on one side, we want to be able to measure the diversity of something, but on the other side, we have to be sure that this diversity is effectively perceived as it is measured. And this contrast between user measure and systems measure is something that it's kind of important to take into account. But also I would like to talk about the limitation of this study because there are several. And in this way, in, in this, with this, I mean the limitation of all the thesis, not the particular study. And the first one is the fact that as most of the study in our field, uh, we choose to in, let's say we interact mostly with people with, from where the countries, as we have seen before, but also the data that we used were mostly from where country, because for example, in the study with the playlist, the part of the data set were from the States or the, with platform like Last.fm, mostly used in Western countries. And this clearly limits the overall validity of the results or more than validity, the generalizability of the results. So we believe that as future works, Let's say it's important to be in communication with other parts of the world because clearly where countries are just a little, little fraction of the world. And there are a lot of music also outside Western countries. Second, electronic music and its representation, because you have seen that the last two studies have been focused on a specific music genre, which is electronic music, mostly because for us it was important to see effectively how the knowledge and the familiarity with a specific genre was relevant in the interaction with the recommendation, but clearly this is a limitation because we don't know if 
using another style of music or another music genre, we may achieve the same results. In this, in this sense, we believe, and we hope that in future, maybe other study will uh, focus on uh, different music culture. And lastly, and probably most important, uh, in, this is kind of a limitation of my thesis, a limitation of probably a lot of works in the tech industry and the re recommender system research, because when working with diversity, sometimes this is used as a feel-good uh, uh, panacea in the sense that we say diversity because we want more diversity, but sometimes what we want, really want or what we wish we want is more talking about inequality and more talking about social issues that can be uh, caused also by a recommender system in general, maybe artificial intelligence. And I wanted to conclude this presentation with the words of the Angela Davis, an American scholar, that remind us what and how we should approach diversity when we are working with it. We, we got the support of the Academic Senate, uh, who um, agreed with us that something needed to be done on that campus uh, to make it uh, what I guess you would call today more diverse. Um, although I have problems with that term, uh, because that seems to be the term that has colonized all of our struggles for social justice. All you need to do is mention the word diversity and it stands in for um, anti-racist work, it stands in for work against homophobia, it stands in, it stands in for everything. And, and it can mean nothing. And one of the... I mean, I'm not saying that diversity is not important. It can be, but you have to have a strong concept of diversity. So, nothing to add on this, but uh, with the last two slides, I would like just to show you, uh, to summarize what have been the contribution of the PhD thesis in terms of physical contribution. So during this PhD, I produced six papers, and also I participated in three projects funded by the European Union that has been really important and really influential in developing on the thesis because through collaborating with other people in other projects, I've been able to learn something not only related to music recommendation diversity, which is really important. And also most of part of the work done has been published in open source and you can find on the web, both the, so the software and the data set that I've developed. And also well, I've been lucky to have been awarded a cover of awards, especially one, the, the overview that we published on uh, the Tismir Journal has been awarded this year. And uh, also I've, I've been awarded by this Truvel Avant Award for presenting the work about the interviews that I showed you before. And really last slide, uh, I'm also quite proud of all the work that I did in terms of dissemination because uh, apart from that, it has been kind of fun, but also because I think it's important that what we produce here as researchers is also understand and also arrive to people outside the university, outside the academia, but it's general, outside the scientific conferences. And I have a lot of fun, especially I don't know, in going on television and talking about my research, but also in participating in panel in the music, uh, music festival. And definitely, I don't want to say this is the most important part of my PhD, but it's something that I'm really proud of. With this, it was the last side of my presentation, and I think it's time for the question.